SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. You've got questions, we've got the answers. Thanks for tuning in to episode 82 of Lab Padre SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week on Friday morning, two United States Air Force T-38 Talons performed a flyby on the launch site giving Nurdle Camera the opportunity for an epic shot. Over at the Sanchez site, Chief spotted a few SpaceX employees working on a booster engine section purge tank. This large pressure tank will hold CO2 that will be pushed through the booster's engine compartments to prevent the buildup of flammable gases like we saw during the first integrated fly test in April. On Monday, Ship 31's mid lox tank section was tandem lifted to the turntable in high bay along with the upper part of the ship as stacking operations continue to push forward. That night, the original and likely now obsolete Ship two-point lifter was moved via SPMT to the launch site, where it ended up being stored back behind Test Stand B. On Tuesday morning, scaffolding that has been given workers access to the top of Booster 9 from the ship QD arm was removed, indicating work on the top of the booster was completed. About an hour later, the launch site LR-11000 crawler crane lifted the hot staging ring from its resting place next to the launch mount and reinstalled it on top of Booster 9. While the hot staging ring was off of the booster, crews were seen working on top of the booster. Whether this was some kind of issue with the standard booster hardware or adjustments needing following the first full stack with a hot staging ring isn't clear yet. Either way, the work was done and SpaceX was ready for the next full stack of Starship and Super Heavy. Back down at ground level, crews continued to work on the plumbing in the prefabricated pipe manifolds for the liquid oxygen HIPPO subcoolers at the orbital tank farm. While we await approval from the FAA and Fish and Wildlife Services for the second integrated flight test, it seems that SpaceX is making the most of this extra time to move forward with the tank farm improvements that were likely originally scheduled for after the launch. Once fully integrated, the new subcoolers and pumps on both sides of the tank farms should allow for quicker loading of propellants into the vehicles. Over at the Sanchez site, Chief caught a clamp arm being lifted for installation on one of the new black stands. The intended use of these new stands is still hotly debated, with theories from boosters, static fire stands to new and improved transport stands. Is it one of those or something else? Let us know your thoughts below. Construction of the new expansion to the Star Factory continues to push forward at a brisk pace with exterior cladding being installed on the section next to the still standing Tent 3. Chief also caught some excellent shots of workers adding prefabricated roof sections onto the stepped up roof level of the Star Factory expansion. As we can see from the columns closest to us, the final section of the building will be even taller than the one they were working on in this picture. Once the hot staging ring had been safely installed on top of Booster 9, the crane moved across the launch site and back to Pad B to support Ship 26 while crews do additional work inside it. Back at the build site, the modified aft section of Ship 27, the last remaining piece of the otherwise scrapped ship, was relocated in the ring yard in preparation for its rollout. Overnight, just before the transport closure window opened at midnight, the section again began moving in the ring yard. It made its way onto Highway 4 and then down the road to Massey's test site. In the morning, the newly arrived ship aft section was connected to the crane at Massey's, lifted from its transport stand and placed into the now seemingly misnamed Nose Cone Jail. It remains to be seen what testing SpaceX has planned for this test article, but hopefully this testing will help us rename this test structure. At the launch site, with the pad cleared, the chopsticks lifted Ship 25 once again and raised it up the tower before slowly setting it back on top of the hot staging ring. While the ship will still need to be de-stacked at least once more for the installation of the flight termination system, hopefully this latest integration will yield some full stack testing. After crews had removed the protective covers from ports on the ship quick disconnect panel, the quick disconnect on the tower arm was slowly extended, aligned, and attached to the ship. 
During the stacking, Chief was on site and caught an amazing shot looking up into the engine bay of Ship 25. The morning lighting combined with Chief's great vantage point allows us to see the protective ceilings that separated the engine bells from the power heads and associated piping, hydraulics, and power and data lines. It's also worth noting that all of the remove before flight static fire rings have long since been removed from Ship 25's three vacuum raptors. Shortly after the quick disconnect attached to the ship, Chief caught some amazing footage of a full speed retraction test, including the new protective door for the ports on the interface of the tower's quick disconnect arm. Chief also brought us some new images of the grading work being done next to the suborbital tank farm. Now that the new wall has been completed, separating the site from the wetlands, heavy equipment has been busy grading and smoothing the path between Highway 4 and the underdevelopment area out past Test Stand B. Chief also stopped off over near Raptor Roost, where many of the local Starship enthusiast groups have viewing sites outside of the hard exclusion zone. Word on the street is that SpaceX has also bought several properties in this area and are currently building observation platforms for VIP viewing opportunities. On Thursday, Chief stopped by Massey's test site and caught crews working to install the first beam for the new warehouse building being constructed there. Not much is known about this building yet other than it's being described as a warehouse with office space at the mezzanine level. Will this new building be that simple or could that office space be a new Starship mission control? Let us know your thoughts below. Late on Wednesday, the Rover 2 camera caught one of the ship transport stands at the launch site being removed from the pad and driven down Highway 4 before turning down Remedios Avenue. On Thursday evening, the Ship 24.2 test article was staged near the build site entrance in preparation for another overnight closure for the article's rollout to the Massey's test site. Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography took to the South Texas skies again on Wednesday and brought us more great looks at Starbase. At Massey's test site, we can see the mangled remains of the Ship 26.1 test tank on the burst pad following its test to destruction last week. Ship 29 is at the ship cryo station where it has now seemingly been successfully cryo tested and possibly even puck shucked. Nearby, the modified Ship 27 aft section had already been placed into the test structure. Also in the area, we can see the hot stage test article, the previously cut off ring and a half from the Ship 26.1 test article, and the latest E Dome test tank. And lastly, we can see the foundation for Massey's new warehouse building with the steel staged for installation. Down Highway 4 at the build site, steady progress can be seen on the newest Starbase Mega Bay. A lot more steel has now been installed on the upper level of the building, as well as a lot of metal decking. Notably, the center of the building has been left open to allow for the installation of the bridge cranes. We have yet to see the trolleys for these bridge cranes, but the girders have been on site for a while now. In the near future, we should see them move into the building, at which point the LR-11000 should drop its hook through the center opening and lift the bridge crane parts up into position. Also of note, next to Mega Bay, one we can see several prefabricated steel frames, similar to the prefabricated stair sections we saw built and then installed in Mega Bay 2's front corners. These new frames are likely for elevator shafts that are expected to be installed in the back corners of the building, giving this latest Mega Bay more standard elevators rather than the construction elevators we have seen in the past and like we currently see on the outside of this under construction building. Saturday in Florida, Doug returned with two fairing halves while also towing a short fall of Gravitas with Booster 1058 following its record-setting launch of the Starlink Group 6-17 mission. Just a few hours later, the sootiest booster in the Falcon 9 fleet was lifted off of the deck on the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand. Late that night, the booster watched from the dock as Booster 1060 joined it atop the leaderboard as it took off from Slick 40 for its 17th mission. Monday, it was back to work for Doug and its crew as they headed out to sea with a short fall of Gravitas in support of the next Starlink launch. On Tuesday, Cape Cam spotted the third prefabricated section of the new Space Launch Complex 40 Dragon Access Tower as crews moved it to the launch site for installation. 
around that same time. Their nearly all black Falcon 9 booster 1058 was lifted and laid onto the transporter for another trip back to Hangar X for refurbishment. Early on Wednesday morning, Bob motored back into Port Canaveral, towing Just Read the Instructions with 17 flight veteran boosters 1060 following the Starlink Group 6-18 launch. That afternoon, the dockside crane lifted the booster free from Just Read the Instructions drone ship and placed it on the stand for processing ahead of its return to Roberts Road. On Friday, SpaceX's latest Falcon Heavy rocket was rolled out and raised vertical at historic Launch Complex 39A for a static fire of the vehicle's 27 Merlin engines before payload integration and then launch of the Psyche mission that is currently scheduled to launch on the 12th of October. Early the next morning, fire erupted from the base of the three combined Falcon 9 boosters as the Falcon Heavy roared its worthiness to launch the mission to study the Asteroid 16 Psyche. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.